Hey guys, so I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who watched the last video. I really appreciate all the support I got on the video. It was really great to achieve my goal and, uh, and break three hours for the marathon. So uh, the idea was to do a bit of a race recap and uh, yeah, talk about the civil marathon, how it was organized, how it went. Yeah, and then also talk a bit about uh, the race itself and how I managed to break uh, sub three hours for the marathon. So I must say that the race was uh, really well organized. The road closures were uh, really good, um, there was no issues there, uh, lots of support out on the course, even though yeah, it's quite a small marathon compared to other big city marathons, I think there were only 10,000 participants, so not uh, that many. The expo was also really good, uh, I think the main sponsor was Essex and they also had an area where you could test shoes, uh, so that was really nice. There was a pasta party the day before, Yeah, we had some uh, pasta there, so it was a relatively small uh, portion to be honest. So not enough uh, to carb load, for sure, for a marathon, but uh, yeah, it was good to get that anyway. It was free and then we had some uh, dinner after that. Yeah, so at the start there was also a bit of an issue, there wasn't enough toilets. Uh, so you had to wait a very long time to, uh, to use the toilets before the race. Um, yeah, and there were also some people that were actually um, peeing just, uh, just beside the start. So that was yeah, not something very nice to see. Yeah, during the race, I think the volunteers did a great job of uh, passing out water and Aquarius and they would also like uh, yell out what they're handing out of its water Aquarius, which was really helpful for me because I didn't plan on taking Aquarius because I hadn't trained with that. Yeah, and they also handed out at some point uh, bottles of water so you could uh, carry it with you for a little while and that was uh, yeah, very helpful as well. Yeah, so I think uh, the course itself also was uh, very good. Um, I mean, you do notice that it's a bit of a small city, so there are parts where you do repeat the course, especially in the beginning, but I think that's fine. Um, the streets are really wide. Um, yeah, and there's lots of spaces for spectators to watch. Um, the only thing is that there is some parts towards the middle and the end where it's quite exposed, and yeah, the wind really did uh, have an impact there. But uh, yeah, we managed to get through it, we managed to run in a pack for the most part of it. Yeah, and the last part of the race is uh, through the sort of old center of the city, which is, uh, yeah, not tarmac roads, a lot of cobbled streets, uh, tram tracks. So yeah, there it was, a, and a lot of turns as well, so there it was a bit uh, tricky to uh, get through, but uh, yeah, we managed to do it, and uh, it was just a little bit hard to really uh, kick up the speed in the last few kilometers, especially if you need it, I think. But yeah, on the whole, I think it's a, a great race. Uh, I'd really recommend it to uh, anyone um, who's thinking about Seville. I would uh, definitely encourage it. The temperature was perfect, yeah, crowds were great, and yeah, it was well organized. So, uh, and I think there were lots of fast times as well. It's probably not as fast as uh, Valencia, but uh, yeah, still a good race uh, nonetheless, and it's maybe a bit more of a low key race than yeah, earlier in the year. So, uh, if you want to get a head start on your marathons, I think it's a, a good idea. The only thing I did find was, at least for myself, it was quite tricky to train through the winter. Really the, the worst months in December and January. Uh, yeah, so maybe you don't have that much of an issue if you train for an April marathon, then you have maybe a bit better weather to train in. So uh, about the race itself, I felt uh, very calm going into the race, which was uh, yeah surprising for me. Normally I'm quite nervous before. Uh, in fact, normally I don't manage to sleep the night before as well, uh, but yeah, somehow I did manage to sleep and I, I was pretty calm even in the morning. I think it really yeah, helped me focus on what's important and not yeah, get too caught up in, uh, in the nerves. So it helped me have a clear mind going into the race and looking at everything objectively as much as possible rather than acting on emotion. I'm just going to take you through the race and uh, yeah, how it went and then my thoughts uh, every five kilometers or so. And the first uh, 5K, and basically in the, at the start, I was just trying not to fall over. Yeah, not surge as much as possible. A gap will open up and then you can pass, rather than going around and surging. And yeah, that didn't really work out in Amsterdam. I was also telling myself to slow down, slow down, slow down as much as possible, uh, because I know you can get eager in the first few kilometers. And I went through the first 5K in 2043. So that was already too fast, it was already 30 seconds faster than I had planned to do on the day. But I was feeling good and it felt very controlled. And yeah, also at the end of the first 5k I took my first gel. So I was taking the um, 
I don't even know what they're called. I'll uh, put them on the screen now. Yeah, those uh, those gels, and they have about 25 grams of carbs. So uh, yeah, I was taking those, uh, and I was alternating between uh, the caffeinated ones and the non-caffeinated ones. Yeah, and then the second uh, 5K, so up on 5K till 10K, I was really just trying to settle into a pace, settle into a rhythm, something that really feels like marathon pace and not something that feels closer to half marathon pace. Uh, and yeah, focusing as much as possible on good form and moving as efficiently as possible, so not wasting extra energy. The second 5K, I did it also in 2043. So uh, yeah, same as the first 5K exactly. At the 10K mark, I took the second gen. Yeah, from 10k to 15k, um, I met Martina on the road and I took uh, the first uh, bottle of Morton. So I had the uh, Morton 360 drink mix in two soft flasks. Uh, so yeah, split over two soft flasks. So each um, has 40 grams of carbs. And uh, when I passed Martina at around 12 and a half kilometers, I took this first uh, soft flask and I uh, took it um, as slowly as possible. So I tried to take it over like two or three kilometers because I knew. I was gonna um, pass her the soft flask uh, at 22k next, so uh, yeah, I said I, I have time to take it, so I'll just take it as slowly as possible and not, yeah, let my heart rate creep up just because I'm downing this uh, this Morton. And yeah, I think that worked really well. The third 5k split, I did it in 2049. Slowed down slightly, but uh, yeah, still well ahead of schedule, so I think that was good. From uh, 15 to 20k, I did it in uh, 2058. So slow down a little bit more again, but still, uh, yeah, still going faster than I had wanted to. And yeah, I did notice that some people started passing me here. Um, so I did get a little bit concerned by that. And I was thinking like to myself, am I slowing down? Like what's going on? But um, yeah, it was just uh, marathon nerves, I guess, kicking in at that point. From 20 to 25K. I did it in 2059. Yeah, and at that point I was just uh, trying really to remain conscious of my efforts as much as possible. I did notice that at this point in the race there were like some quiet spots, one or two K stretches where there weren't many people. And yeah, I don't know, it just somehow concerned me a little bit and started making me slightly worried. I was just really trying to um, gauge my effort and if I was reaching my, my threshold, to really just dial it back about five seconds per kilometer. I was just worried, so I'll reach threshold just a bit too soon and uh, yeah, would end up bonking. So I knew that was still a possibility at this uh, at this point. From uh, 25K to 30K, I actually started overtaking the people that had previously over overtaken me about 10 kilometers before that. So that was a good feeling and that gave me the confidence and reassurance that okay, what I did was, before was a good idea to really just slow down as much as possible, remain calm and uh, yeah, not not go over my threshold. So that was perfect. Yeah, and I did the 25 to 30K split in 2049. So I uh, picked it up a little bit and uh, yeah, felt comfortable still. Uh, from 30 to 35K, I did it in uh, 2050. So uh, it's a very similar splits. Um, yeah, and this at this point we passed through the Plaza de España, and yeah, the support there was amazing. There was uh, yeah, support all around, uh, and you you go around the Plaza de España, so yeah, there's lots of time to uh, soak in all the all the atmosphere. And I really felt like I had to hold myself back and not uh, go any faster because I felt myself like surging. Yeah, and I also knew that I still had to control my effort at that point because there was still eight kilometers to go, so. Um, yeah, you could end up surging, going into half marathon pace or 10k pace and then still not finish the race. So I really had to uh, yeah, calm down. From 35 to 40k, um, I was trying to pick it up a little bit because I knew we were nearing the end. And I did manage to pick it up a little bit. The that 5k split was 2040. So uh, yeah, just a little bit quicker. But at the same time, uh, in the video, you can see uh, at 35k, I'm saying like, uh, yeah, really starting to uh, feel it now, um, feeling the marathon in the legs. Yeah, the sports also uh, around that uh, point was really good, especially once you enter the uh, the old town. Um, the streets are very narrow. So uh, yeah, you feel the support a lot more. And there are small streets, so even yeah, half the amount of supporters uh, seems like double the amount of supporters in the big streets. That really did uh, push me on. But I did have to be a bit weary of uh, yeah people around me as well because the last thing I wanted to do was uh, yeah trip up 
with uh, 5k to go. And then uh, yeah, the last uh, two kilometers or so, so the last 2.195 uh, kilometers, I knew that sub three was in the bag. I was just starting to do mental maths, starting to see, okay, can I break uh, 257? Yes, okay, can I break 256? Maybe, can I break 255? Probably not. So it's just like all these scenarios started going through my head and I started thinking like, okay, um, what do I need to run the last two kilometers to uh, reach that goal? And it's, yeah, <laughs> lots of mental maths. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's one way of making the last two kilometers go by faster. And yeah, for the last two kilometers, I did them in an average pace of uh, 4.03. So uh, I did pick it up slightly. I really did feel like I was going much faster than that. I really felt like I was at, uh, running at half marathon pace or 10K pace, but I guess that's normal at the end of a marathon. You just don't have the speed in your legs anymore. So uh, a bit more uh, data from uh, the marathon itself. My cadence was 176, which I think is, yeah, uh, about right for me especially at marathon base, I think maybe at half marathon or 10k it's normally slightly higher, closer to 180. But I think, uh, yeah, for a marathon for three hours, I think that's decent. And yeah, the stride length uh, was 1.37 uh, meters, yeah, which is also, uh, that combination I think is very similar to what I was doing in training for the 5k blocks that I was practicing. So um, yeah, I think that shows that I, I, I was moving quite efficiently. And yeah, the heart rate data was uh, yeah average heart rate of 173 and uh, maximum of 191. Yeah, and I only really went over my threshold or so, which I would say is um, 179. That's, I feel like the pace I can hold for about an hour. And that, um, yeah, I went over that threshold uh, in the last seven kilometers. So I feel like that was, uh, was about right for me. I remember in the previous marathon uh, in Amsterdam, I went over that threshold uh, way too early, uh, yeah, because of sickness and uh, other things. Uh, but yeah, I was basically running at half marathon effort for most of the race, which is, uh, yeah, probably why I didn't break uh, three hours back then. So uh, that was the video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to uh, like and uh, subscribe, and uh, yeah, also follow me on uh, on Strava and Instagram if you'd uh, if you'd like. And yeah, what's what's next for me? Uh, Probably some shorter stuff for now, so uh, some 5 and 10k races. And uh, yeah, also maybe a, a half marathon uh, effort where I'll uh, try to break uh, 1 hour and 21 minutes for the, for the half marathon. But yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see next on the channel and uh, yeah, I'll try uh, make that happen.